So how excited are you about this uh, inauguration? It's exciting, it's different. New people, new philosophies, and a new city. We've got new problems, and I'm looking forward to the inauguration. I am very excited. I think that uh, we waited 20 years for this, and New York will not be held back. We will wait no longer. Uh, this is the day of the Blasio, and uh, I am glad to be here in this day. Now, how do you think he'll uh, do uh, uh, as mayor the next couple of years? I'm expecting great things. Uh, I'm expecting amazing things to happen. Uh, in fact, I'm going to help it happen. <laughs> that New York is entering into a new chapter with a new mayor. We wish him the best of luck. And we hope that he's successful in uh, leading this great city. To me, this is a special one because I go back uh, with Bill for approximately 15 years. I, I knew him before he was a city councilman and uh, was with him as public advocate and, uh, and now as uh, the new mayor. I'm thrilled. We hope that this is an this is administration who is going to embrace and protect the rights and the needs of all people. Welcome back to the program. I'm here with Zeb Brenner. Believe it or not, I've never been to an inauguration before. This is my first one and it's exciting to be here. Now, what do you expect from uh, the Blasio administration? Well, you know, there's going to be a lot that's promised, a lot that will be delivered. I think, uh, as you had Mark Green on the other night, he said, there is what's ideology and what's practical. And I think you're going to see a practical mayor um, coming in. So, as much as rhetoric is to be for the election, now you're going to see a whole new trend. We do the realities of New York. New York is a very complex place to run. It all right. seems like a very promising spirit in the air, like all inaugurations are. And there seems to be a promising spirit in New York in general. And obviously, people feel good about that. But like Zeb said, there's the ideology and then there's the practicality. Everybody is for a fair New York. Everybody is for a New York where everybody can make it. And there are a number of problems that face everybody in New York, and in particular people in our community. But we're all uh, optimistic and hopeful that this administration is very interested in working with us, and time will tell. President Bill Clinton, Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton, Governor Andrew Cuomo, United States Senator Charles Schumer, Former Mayor Michael Bloomberg, Former Mayor David Dinkins, Former Governor Mario Cuomo, Former Governor David Patterson, New York State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, New York State Comptroller Tom DiNapoli. Please welcome the 109th Mayor of the City of New York. Let integrity never stand on the auction block or be sold to the highest bidder. Free us from the shackles of partisan politics, political correctness, 
and personal egos and agendas. Deliver us from evil and lead them not into all of the temptations and intoxications that shall abound. O oh God, 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 end the civil wars and usher in a new reconstruction era that builds upon the many successes and achievements of yesterday. It doesn't matter what the color is on the outside, it's the stuff on the inside. We all come here made of the same stuff on the inside. And thus it's not enough to look heavenly to God, we must look humanly to one another. There is a famous song that says, I've got to be me. Today we sing, I've got to be we. We stood here after the wreckage of 9-11 and we promised that we would build again. And we did. Today we stand here and we pledge that we will begin again. And we will. We of different faiths, but always we of one human family. Amen. Assist our new mayor, Bill de Blasio, with strength and fortitude that his administration will protect the people of this great city from crime and all forms of adversity. May he be a champion for the poor, the young, the old, the newcomers, and those born in this city those who embrace the many religions of this city and those who do not believe, those who voted for him and those who did not. State of New York. And the Charter of the City of New York. And the Charter of the City of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the Officer Controller. The duties of the Officer Controller. Of the City of New York. Of the City of New York. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. <laughs> and being fiscally responsible is not mutually exclusive. We can and we must do both. Now we can double down on solving homelessness, on improving our infrastructure, on growing jobs while also protecting our AA bond rating. We can lift up every New Yorker by ensuring that all communities are treated equally before the law. We can educate every child with the skills needed to compete in the 21st century economy. And yes, we can shelter every family in safe, affordable homes, not squalid shelters, where 22,000 of our children will go to sleep tonight. As the city's chief fiscal officer, it is my duty and my promise that I will do everything in my power to maintain our fiscal health. As I discharge my duty, I want to express appreciation to the Honorable David Davis, the first mayor of African American descent who served the city with dedication. He now stands in solidarity and support of public advocate James. 
And also permit me to acknowledge the heroic contributions of this young woman, Sonny Coates, who has captured the imagination and won the respect of the citizens of New York, who now holds the life. Please place your right hand on the Bible and your left hand in the air. Now after me, repeat this oath of office. I, I Letitia James, Letitia James, solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Charter of the City of New York. And the Charter of the City of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of, of public advocate. Public advocate. Of the City of New York. Of the City of New York. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I conclude. I now. conclude. I conclude. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> I charge you <laughs> to be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, to do what the citizens of New York elected you to do, and to speak courageously and clearly truth to the powerful, and acknowledge and attend the voice of the disenfranchised and dispossessed, whose voices must be respected and responded to. Now, Public Advocate James, go make a difference so that when you leave office, people will say that you left them better off than when you found them. I joined public service because I felt it was the single most effective way to change the outlook of exclusion and marginalization that has left a mark on so many New Yorkers at one time or another. The wave of progressive victories our city has recently enjoyed thanks to the city council was in some ways inevitable. The fabric of our city, of our nation, is made strong by the untold sacrifices of so many who are left defenseless, unrepresented, unspoken for. But at some point in history, the tide must turn. The policies that make them voiceless must give way to a government that works for them, that speaks for them, that cares more about a child going hungry than a new stadium or a new tax credit for a luxury development. Where what should be the race to the bottom for high quality education has turned into a race to the bottom for standardized test scores. And where hospital closures serve as an existential threat to the health of our community and library privatization moves are little more than land grabs for more luxury condos. Most disturbingly, we live in a city where a New York City worker can work full time and still need food stamps to feed her family. Where more and more jobs pay lower and lower wages until we find ourselves in a place where half of all New Yorkers are living at or near the poverty line. I congratulate public advocate Jane and Controller Stringer, I thank all of the people who are here. I'm not sure we introduced one of our guests, but I want to say I'm grateful that the Governor and First Lady of Puerto Rico are here because it reminds us what's special about New York. It's been a great joy for Hillary and me to see the mayor's progress because he worked in my administration with Governor Cuomo and Senator Gillibrand and HUD because he managed Hillary's first remarkable campaign for the U.S. Senate because he has served with such passion and because he represents with his family, the future of our city and the future of our country. I got a big kick out of watching New Yorkers fall in love with Bill and Shirlane and Kiara and Dante. I'm grateful to both mayors. 
Mayor Bloomberg for his years of service and for the legacy he will leave and to Mayor de Blasio for his good and caring hands. I wanted not to say much except the oath, <laughs> but I have to say this, I strongly endorse Bill de Blasio's core campaign commitment that we have to have a city of shared opportunities, shared prosperity, shared responsibilities. We are interdependent. Look around. We can't get away from each other. We have to define the terms of our dependence. And this inequality problem bedevils the entire country. And I can tell you from my work, much of the world but it is not just a moral outrage, it is a horrible constraint on economic growth and on giving people the security we need to tackle problems like climate change. We cannot go forward if we don't do it together. And I am very grateful that all of us in our many different backgrounds are committed to supporting our mayor, our new government, in this great endeavor. This is a gift we could give not only to New Yorkers, not only to the state, but to the country, and indeed increasingly to the entire world. We are going to share the future. We need to share it in a positive way. And with that in mind, I would like to ask the 109th Mayor of New York to come forward and take the oath. here today. And I have to note that over 20 years ago, when a conservative philosophy seemed dominant in our nation, you broke through and told us to still believe in a place called hope. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Secretary Clinton. I was so inspired by the time I spent on your first campaign. Your groundbreaking commitment to nurturing our children and families 
manifested itself in a phrase that is now a part of our American culture and something we believe in deeply in this city. It takes a village. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Mayor Bloomberg. Please, let's acknowledge the incredible commitment of our mayor. To say the least, you led our city through some extremely difficult times. And for that, we are all grateful. Your passion on issues such as environmental protection and public health has built a noble legacy. We pledge today to continue that great progress that you've made in these critically important areas. Thank you, Mayor Bloomer. We will ask the very wealthy to pay a little more in taxes so that we can offer full day universal pre-K for every child in this city and after school programs for every middle school child. And when we say a little more, we can rightly emphasize the little. Those earning between $500,000 and a million dollars a year, for instance, would see their taxes increase by an average of $973 a year. That's less than three bucks a day, about the cost of a small soy latte at your local <laughs> Starbucks. Think about it. A five-year tax on the wealthiest among us with every dollar dedicated to pre-K and after school. Asking those at the top to help our kids get on the right path and stay there. That's our mission. And on that, we will not wait. We'll do it now. Now, of course, I know that our progressive vision isn't universally shared. Some on the far right continue to preach the virtues of trickle-down economics. They believe that the way to move forward is to give more to the most fortunate, and that somehow the benefits will work their way down to everyone else. They sell their approach as the path of rugged individualism, but Fiorello LaGuardia, the man I consider to be the greatest mayor this city has ever known, he put it best. He said, I too admire the rugged individual, but no rugged individual can survive in the midst of collective starvation. So please remember, we do not ask more of the wealthy to punish success. We do it to create more success stories. And we do it to honor a basic truth, that a strong economy is dependent on a thriving school system. We do it to give every kid a chance to get their education off on the right foot from the earliest age, which study after study has shown leads to greater economic success healthier lives, and a better chance of breaking the cycle of poverty. We do it to give peace of mind to working parents who suffer the anxiety of not knowing whether their child is safe and supervised during those critical hours after the school day ends, but before the work day is done. And we do it because we know that we must invest in our city and the future inventors and CEOs and teachers and scientists so that our generation, like every generation before us, can leave this city even stronger than we found it. Our beloved city is no stranger to big struggles and no stranger to overcoming them. New York has faced fiscal collapse and the crime epidemic, terrorist attacks and natural disasters. But now, 
in our time, we face a different crisis, an inequality crisis. It's not often the stuff of banner headlines in our daily newspapers. It's a quiet crisis, but one no less pernicious than the ones that came before. Its urgency is read on the faces of our neighbors and their children as families struggle to make it against increasingly long odds. To tackle a challenge this daunting, we need a dramatic new approach, rebuilding our communities from the bottom up, from the neighborhoods up. And just like before, the world will watch us as we succeed. We will remember what makes New York, New York. A city that fights injustice and inequality, not just because it honors our values, but because it strengthens our people. A city of five boroughs, all created equal. Black, white, Latino, Asian, gay, straight, old, young, rich, middle class, and poor. A city that remembers our responsibility to each other. Our common cause is to leave no New Yorker behind. That's the city that you and I believe in. It's the city to which my grandparents were welcomed from the hills of southern Italy. The city in which I was born, where I met the love of my life, where Chiara and Dante were raised. It's a place that celebrates a very simple notion that no matter what your story is, this is your city. Our strength is derived from you. Working together, we will make this one city. And that mission, our march towards a fairer, more just, more progressive place, our march to keep the promise of New York alive for the next generation, it begins today. Thank you. And God bless the people of the city of New York. It's a great new beginning and I'm glad that uh, everybody was stressing the necessity of dealing with the inequality in our society because we have to deal with it.